Hey, it's Jerry with TradeTheFifth.com. I'm going to go through some of the uh, indexes here uh, for the levels discussion we've been having over the last several weeks. Um, I've got a two-panel chart for, on the left, is the weekly uh, with the Elliott Wave indicator, the um, monthly in the background, and weekly stochastics from the Elliott Wave suite, and the 535 oscillator on the right panel. I have a three-day background multiple time frames, stochastic, and uh, of course this is a daily chart. I've isolated on the lows in December, <coughs> excuse me, on the weekly chart. And as you know, we've been talking about the price action we've been having in this trading range. We broke out of it once and then sold back within it. We're still within this consolidation trading range. We had hit a fifth wave target, wasn't quite in the target zone, but technically was a wave five high for IWM and we're in now a corrective pattern um, on the daily chart. Uh, we talked last week about these buying tails uh, suggesting and a close on the higher Friday suggesting higher prices. Unfortunately China came in over the weekend and, and uh, announced some counter tariffs to US goods which sent us deep uh, in the hole on Monday. We did find some support and we started working our way out of it. On Thursday, we had a pretty bullish day and then sold off uh, towards the end of the day. On Friday, we started, you know, we started with a gap lower uh, and we, you know, got a, a little bit, we started working our way out of that towards the highs of the week. Then we got news, <coughs> excuse me, late in the day that the China US trade talks have, have stalled and then we sold off pretty strong right into the close with all the indexes and uh, everything there suggests that we're going to get continuation to the downside uh, going into next week. Um, Paul has talked about, by the way, looking to see this daily um, stochastic really finding its way a little bit deeper. Uh, the background three-day stochastic here, the orange line and gray line, you know, probably will find its way deeper and you'll get coincidence now with both of these being below the uh, being in the oversold zone and then a good signal out of it is probably going to be a stochastic signal on the shorter time frame followed by the stochastic signal on the longer <coughs> excuse me still sporting a cold here on the longer time frame so continuation to the downside if I look at the charts I've been prior showing uh, more often, uh, the weekly on the left, daily, oh, that's the SPY, I'm going to do that one at the end, uh, the weekly on the, in the middle, and the daily on the right side, the RSI is rolling over, the MACD, mm -hmm. fix that, yeah, that was not Q, the IWM. Okay, so the stochastic is rolling over on the daily for the IWM. It is starting to flatten out. It hasn't even gotten back to the zero line, indicating potential positive moment momentum, and it's rolling over below the zero line. Um, I think everything to me says we're more than likely headed down to this, to test this lower end in this prior wave four low. It might end up being a deeper uh, wave four, or it's going to start looking like a wave three to the downside on a downward move. Um, the weekly RSI is heading downward. <clears throat> the uh, MACD is headed downward. I've talked about in some prior videos the uh, reverse engineering RSI. I've looked at this uh, 42 level a few times. We've pulled back to a 42 and gone back up a 42, a 42. And I thought, what if, what if uh, I put a 42 in, where would we more or less get down to? And that shows at 147.75. So if RSI on the weekly were to get down to that 42 level, it projects 147.75, which is just below the bottom end of this um, <coughs> box that we had before. You know, we've, we've had situation already where we've gotten outside of it and rejected and come back within it. Wouldn't surprise me at all if we back tested this 
uh, prior broken downtrend line, we back test down to it, find support, and get our way back out again. So that's really what I'm looking for uh, with IWM, unless we get some news that would indicate otherwise. Triple Qs, left hand weekly, right hand daily. Um, I think Paul has talked about, you know, really wanting to see deeper pullback on the triple Qs, having a crossover in the oversold zone. Even though we're kind of flattening out here with the 535 oscillator and all of the multiple time frame clouds, you know, going out to the monthly, right? So I've got the anchor trend on the monthly, and then I've got a weekly, and I've got a three day, a two day, and a daily uh, time frame here on the multiple time frame cloud. <coughs> All the indications are we're, we're quite bullish uh, with that setup. The three day stochastic is still coming down. I think this uh, daily stochastic looks like it's starting to flatten out. It's probably going to come down. We'll probably get a little bit more downward continuation after this uh, shooting star type, you know. Uh, candle that we had as the close on Friday. We closed at a lows. We're probably going to retest down in this area uh, here, um, you know, going into next week. It's all consistent with the things that uh, Paul had talked about and talks about in his morning pre-market sessions. Uh, the RSI on the daily is rolling over. The MACD still is pointing upwards. However, it probably is going to flatten out. The weekly is rolled over. The daily is still coming down. If you do the reverse engineering RSI down around this 49-ish level, uh, you're going to find, I think, around this 170, yeah, around 178.06. And that happens to be coincident with this pivot uh, here. So. All the indications to me are that we're likely going to come down and start looking to test this pivot low uh, on the triple Qs. The SPY. Okay. Again, same thing. The SPY and the Qs from a pattern perspective look very similar, very bullish. Bullish crossovers on the daily, bullish crossover on the three day for the uh, stochastic here. Uh, we're probably rolling over again to find our way to start crossing over in the oversold zone. That will end up being a retest of this uh, four pivot, maybe even a little bit lower if this is a corrective wave. Uh, perhaps this is an A, B, and we're going to get a little bit deeper to a C. Um, you know, we could find support at these lows here around that 277.65 level in the SPY. Did close on the lows of the week, very similar price action that we had. In the other ones, uh, our cloud on the monthly uh, down to the daily looks pretty good. You know, still fairly bullish. Uh, we did try to get over the cloud. We got rejected and pulled back down below the cloud on the daily. Uh, we're actually we're, where the close was in the edge of the bottom of the cloud here, as shown by the blue dot. So we did close uh, on a shooting star type uh, candle towards the low. And uh, with the daily RSI rolling over a little bit and the weekly still headed down and the MACD for the weekly still headed down, everything to me, you know, news notwithstanding, says that we're probably headed down, you know, somewhere towards this wave for a pivot low. Um, on the expected move side, the ES expected move about 58 points. NQ about 177 points and YM about 400. This is my doggy doorbell. Uh, YM about 460 points. Uh, a couple other things I want to point out. Um, we did have a um, the yield curve invert again on the three month uh, 10 year. So that's another thing. It didn't get as much press this time, but we did invert again, and that's also another pretty big warning sign that the 10-year bonds are being bought uh, pretty strongly. And I think the market is pricing in additional risk, not surprising, uh, given the price action that we've seen and the tariff news going back and forth. This is the VIX against the Bollinger Bands. We did have some closes outside the upper Bollinger Band, um, you know, and then we did pull back in, and we found some support and price headed back out. But uh, I'd be looking for the VIX to start coming back up again. Looks like uh, 
you know, we're going to get some of that activity. One very last thing um, that I think is kind of interesting, don't trade with it, but um, I had somebody show me this a long time ago. So this is TradingView, a free chart package. And you can plot the lunar cycles on this. Um, I don't trade with this, but I found it kind of interesting that it seems like every time we headed towards a full moon, the market seems to sell off and it seems to find support at the new moon. I found that kind of interesting, you know, uh, and it, it's pretty consistent uh, in a lot of cases. So we, we you know, it's not 100% consistent, but you do see whenever we get these full moon cycles, we tend to find these little sell offs and then we tend to get some buying activity during the new moon. Again, I don't trade with it. I think it's kind of funny, kind of interesting. Thought I'd share it. Um, to try to share something a little bit interesting or, or uh, that you haven't seen before. But uh, that is one that I just uh, find fascinating. Anyway, uh, good, good luck, folks. Next week, uh, Paul will have the levels files that I've tweaked up for the price action that we've had over the last week. And uh, wish you good luck trading next week. Take care. Bye-bye.